In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on autocomplete text. Autocomplete text is where we can give a widget on the UI a predefined list of values so that as the user starts typing, it autocompletes, or in other words, it shows a list of values that match what the user has typed. So I can continue to type O, L, I, A, G, R, a, and you see as I type it's narrowing down the list of possible choices until I finally click uh, something like Magnolia Grandiflora. So where we are right now, we've already talked about talked through the first three bullet points and we're on create async task. Now async task is a way we implement threading in Android. And threading is a bit complicated, uh, but it takes uh, the async task makes it a bit easier on one hand, but on the other hand, we have to have a little bit of prerequisite knowledge. We have to know uh, what a thread is and why we want to thread, and we also uh, have to know what a generic is. So in this video, we're going to talk about what a thread is and why we want to thread. Okay, what are threads? They're separate processes that run in a Java program allow units of work to execute nearly simultaneously, increase CPU utilization while processes are, are waiting. So threads allow us to take advantage of the time when our program might be waiting for something. Uh, the biggest example we often think of is waiting for network data. If we had a single threaded application, it would not be responsive when we're waiting for network data. In other words, if we fetch data over the internet, we would have to wait for that to complete before we could allow the user to press a button. That's going to get frustrating for a user because a user might want to cancel an operation or a user might wonder why, uh, why the UI or the application has suddenly become unresponsive. So by default, everything is on one thread. Uh, everything, there are other threads, but everything that we program tends to be on the UI thread. So uh, if we want to do a long-running operation that we want to execute in the background, uh, we need to put it on a separate thread. In Android 4 and greater, this is mandatory. If we are doing a network operation, we have to do it on a separate thread. So uh, in Android 2, we could do it on the UI thread, but the, uh, the problem with that is it would lock up the UI thread, and that caused a very bad user experience. In Android 4, we have to do a separate thread if we're going to do a network operation. Okay, so we have a couple of different types of threads. There are the traditional threads that we have in Java, uh, which is where we have uh, a, a, a class that extends thread or a class that implements the interface runnable, and it has methods uh, run, which is the logic that will run in a separate thread, uh, and then a method called start, and the method called start is what actually starts a thread. We can still use those in Android, but we don't have to. Uh, we uh, also can use something called an async task, and that's what we're going to explore uh, in this series of lectures. Uh, async task, do in background, execute, on post execute. We will take a look at the purposes of those different methods when we look at the async task. But uh, to put it simply, if you have used a traditional thread before, the do in background method of async task is similar to the run method. This is the method that has the logic that will run on a separate thread. The execute method is similar to the start method. That starts a new thread, or in other words, starts a new process, and then it's going to run the do in background method on that new thread. In the case of start, I'm going to start a new process and then execute the run method in that new thread or in that new process. On post execute is called on the UI thread once do in background finishes. So this gives us a chance to take the information that we got in the separate thread and merge it into our user interface. Let's take a look at how we can take advantage of a thread. This is the live plainplaces.com application. I'm going to choose search by color. Now this is a very processor intensive method for several reasons. First of all, we're going to go to the image gallery and pick an image. And what the app has to do in that time is it has to interrogate the image and say, gosh, what are the 
top 16 colors in that image. That takes a lot of work, uh, so it's going to execute on a separate thread. I'm going to try and get the uh, cam the uh, recording to show. I'm going to use this picture of a red bud tree. And what it's going to do is, when I click on the picture, it will, uh, it, it will basically uh, interview the picture and pick uh, one out of every five pixels or so and find its colors. Then it has to sort those colors, uh, and then it has to show us only the top 16. That's going to happen in a separate thread. So if you watch closely, when I click on this picture, there's a little lag uh, between the time this screen goes away and the time the next screen appears with the 16 colors. But with threading, the nice thing is the UI is still responsive. Uh, we can still click on buttons in the user interface while it's doing that processing. This is usually fairly fast, actually, so you have to watch carefully. But as I click, you'll see it will show the picture. And OK, it took just a few moments there, and then the uh, colors appeared. So there's a, that, those colors came from a separate thread. Now, here's another good demonstration of threading. If I click on one of these colors, like the kind of purple color here, the next screen is going to show us a list of results. Now, we want to give the user immediate feedback. So we're going to do a network call, which is going to take this color, go across the internet, and say, hey, find me plants that have this color. Then it's going to show those results in a list as text-based results. Then a separate thread is going to trigger, and that separate thread is going to fetch pictures. So we want to give the user the instant feedback, and that's why we show the text-based results. But we also want to show the user pictures, because we know from the Android design principles that pictures are faster than words. But it's going to take a while to download all those pictures and then put them in our list view. So when I click on this, watch closely. You'll first see a list of text uh, labels that say what the plant is, and then a placeholder, which is the plant place's logo. Then that placeholder is going to be replaced with pictures of the plant. So I click on the mob and watch very closely here. Okay, you see the placeholder, and then the placeholder gets replaced with the picture. If the placeholder is not replaced, that just means we don't have a picture for that particular plant. But you notice it happened in a couple of steps there. And if we had a lot of pictures to download or if we had a slow network connection, the UI would still be responsive. We could still scroll up and down while we're waiting for the pictures. And that's the benefit of threading. So that's threading. Uh, in our next video, we are going to take a look at generics and why generics are important. And then we're going to take generics and threads and we're going to put them together in this concept called async task. I look forward to seeing you then.